UFO headline news with me, Heidi Hollis. Today is Monday, November 27th, 2017. Blasting off with some UFO reports. We begin by blasting off with some UFO reports. A UFO sighting in Oxford. It is described a very large, classic UFO, daylight and stationary. The witness describes... I was driving home from work on a summer evening in June of 2017, in daylight, about half past six, on a cloudy, blustery evening, on a country lane 15 miles south of Oxford. That's when I saw a car stop by the side of the road, and the driver was out of the car, holding up an iPad, photographing the sky low down in the northeast. I looked over and saw a huge metallic disc. A classic UFO shape was visible in a gap in the total cloud cover. I slowed the car but didn't brake hard as I had a speed merchant on my bumper. I observed the disc for approximately 15 to 20 seconds until a line of trees obscured my view. The disc was approximately 20% obscured by cloud which made it easier to estimate its distance and size. This disc was approximately 500 meters in diameter, half a kilometer. It was at least this large. It was shiny, metallic, and with a raised edge. The edge was alternate silver and black panels. Apart from its size, the most surprising fact was it being so stationary. As the clouds rolled on, it was completely static. It was also tilted over at 15 degrees. It was not a balloon or an airship. And anyway, the weather wasn't suitable for such things. I drove on till I'd passed the trees and stopped around a corner, about 400 meters further on, to get a better view and get the car behind me past me. The cloud cover had closed up. I waited and saw no more. Then it started to rain. Oddly, I didn't return to see the person with the iPad. I assumed it would be all over the local news the next day. I'm a 50-year-old engineer that estimates sizes and distances for a living. I know what I saw was not anything normal. And it was massive. I went home. My wife and family found it all very amusing. Everyone I know has heard my tale. They laugh, too, and no one believes me. Why are so many people so short-sighted and unable to believe? The person with the iPad remains a mystery. I scanned the local papers and Internet for anything, but nothing. I haven't stopped kicking myself since for not going back to see iPad Man and get his pictures. Days later, I happened to drive under the location about two miles to the north where I estimated the UFO to be and wondered what there was to see. There, I saw a large solar farm. I'd forgotten about it, as it's not so visible from the road. I believe the UFO was hovering over this and looking down on it. Why else would it be tilted over? The size, the solid metallic shape, and its edges features were all real. It's odd tilt, partly obscured by cloud, and its completely stationary position on such a stormy evening all contributed to it being the firm UFO sighting of my lifetime. I have not stopped berating myself since for not returning to the other witness for his photographic proof. Why didn't he go public with his photos, I wonder? Black Triangle Sighting in Helena, Montana, November 22, 2017. The witness states, I saw a triangle craft hovering south. It was dark, so I could not see the craft's body, but the amber-colored lights on the tips. It was still and silent. I stood watching it for 10 to 15 minutes. Then the bottom light left, separated, moved east, and then gone. The witness continues, I came home from visiting a friend, a cancer patient, in the hospital. 
It was 49 degrees, comfortable, no wind, clear night. I stood on the porch as I approached the door, letting the dog out. Something made me look south rather than go inside. I saw it, still as could be, in the night sky. I didn't go in the house. I said something to the dog and just stood there watching the object. No movement, no noise. I questioned what it was I was seeing and was going through the list. No movement, no noise. I realized this was real. How amazing. I never considered taking a photo with my phone. Didn't think it would work. It was too dark to see the actual body of the subject. Just the amber lights, and I was in awe, not wanting to ruin the moment. I knew it was real. I talked to it in my thoughts. I watched for 10 to 15 minutes as I noticed the truck clock before we got out of the vehicle. I checked the clock in the house when I finally went in. The stillness of the craft was changed. When the bottom left light began to slowly move east, then blinked out. The top light headed straight and then blinked out. Finally, the bottom right light dropped down pretty low. I wondered if it was going to land, but it changed to red and finally blinked out as well. My thoughts as I watched it were so peaceful. No fear, just wonder. I found myself asking the beings inside if they knew much about cancer. Could they help my friend? Could they help humanity with this horrible plague? I didn't feel an answer, but I did feel they heard me. When it was gone, I hoped I would see more. Black Triangle Sighting in Columbia, Tennessee A black triangular object hovered, moved slowly, then disappeared when tried to take a picture. This occurred November 17, 2017. The witness describes... When I saw the UFO, I was in a residential area waiting on someone. I looked up because I like watching the stars, and I see this thing with what looked like spotlights moving around. My radio started getting fuzzy despite having strong connection, so I watched this massive object that was almost touching the trees. I was amazed and scared. I went to grab my phone to take and round some pictures and as I clicked the button the object disappeared into thin air it was nowhere to be seen the object have four bright lights on the bottom moving around a ring of lights around it and it was too dark to make out any of the features I've also been having very weird dreams since I saw it hmm Next up, blast from the past of UFO sightings. On September 28, 2016, the witness states, I was driving on Highway 1 North going to the Raleigh Durham Airport to pick up my girlfriend at the time. It was around 9.20 p.m. The sky was a clear, bright purple sky speckled with stars. I had the window down because the air was neither hot nor cold. The temperature was perfect. The temp was probably in the low 70s. I was listening to a station that was playing great alternative music from my teenage years, but it was weird because the station kept cutting on and off with fuzz sounds. I looked up into the horizon, and there were two bobbing globes of light way off in the distance. And I remember having the thought of, wow, that movement is peculiar. They aren't moving like a helicopter or airplane. They bobbed in place very smoothly, like a slow dance. And the next thought I had was that would be crazy if those are UFOs. And then the third thought I had was that would be great if they came down closer. (laughs) And as soon as I had that thought, the one on the right 
started to descend. And I was like, no way. (laughs) It felt like it descended slowly at first, but within very little time frame, it felt like it was going to fly right in the top of myself in the car ahead of me. As it descended, my legs started to shake vigorously with fear and excitement. And I kept thinking to myself, grab your cell phone on the dash, grab your cell phone on the dash to take a video. But I was so entranced and enamored that I couldn't take my eyes off from it. It was like I was hypnotized by the amazement of the situation, completely entranced. But it came down extremely slow and hovered on top of the tree line right in front of the car ahead of me. It felt like it was going to land on us, which forced us to slow down to like 10 miles an hour on this 65 to 70 mile an hour highway. We were the only two cars on the highway during this event. The craft was close enough that I could have thrown a baseball at it and hit it effortlessly if I wanted to. At this point, it was like a bright spotlight that hovered for a few seconds and the light was bright enough that I couldn't make out any details. Then the hovering vessel turned sideways and revealed that it was a dark, perfect rectangle craft. I could make out the dark rectangular craft because the outline of the craft bottled out the purple night sky. That was three to four car lengths long and two to three car lengths wide. The height or thickness of the craft seemed pretty thin and perfectly streamlined, like five to seven feet from top to bottom. The bottom of the craft had long vertical striations along the belly of the craft going lengthwise. If it had white lights equal distance along the belly of the craft with a couple of red blinking lights, I couldn't see the red blinking lights until the craft turned sideways. But the white lights didn't flicker at all, and the vessel did not appear to give off any heat signature, thrust, or energy field to propel the vessel. It was just a perfect rectangular shape with lights. By this point, myself and the car ahead of me are slowing down to like five miles per hour. The vessel then moved smoothly across the highway going west. The movement was captivating. It moved smoothly and effortlessly. It moved like it was underwater. I had my window down and the vessel gave off no sound at all. As the vessel disappeared over the tall pines to the west, the car ahead of myself started to pick up speed as I did. I believe it was exit 93 or 96, was about 30 feet ahead. And as I was about to exit towards the airport onto the Quick Pass Highway, the car ahead of me started to vigorously flash its lights at me, as if to say, Holy crap, did you see that? And I was exiting, I vigorously flashed my high beams back at the car like, Yeah, that was crazy. (laughs) And then the rest of the ride to the airport, I got really mad at myself for not taking video of the event. Oh, wow. All right, dabs into some mystery science. A former NASA scientist debunks all UFO sightings, blames many on mundane space dandruff. Yes, I said dandruff. <laughs> The story states, this week again, UFO enthusiasts saw a phenomenon and an explanation they didn't believe matched up. The phenomena was a bright, second long streak across a time-lapse video filmed by astronaut Paolo Nespoli. The explanation, as provided by the European Space Agency, was that a meteor was burning up as it entered the Earth's atmosphere. They even identified its location over Earth, calculated the speed at which it was moving, and compared its brightness favorably to that of Venus. 
Judging by the angle it was falling, the agency... You've reached the Holiday Helpline. We turn the holidays into holidays. Hi, my gift list is a mile long. I don't have time to shop around. Get to Old Navy now. Old Navy? Yep, get all the gifts you need, like jeans, sweaters, and dresses, for up to 50% off today, plus accessories from 4 bucks. Up to 50% off jeans, sweaters, and dresses? Want to really cash in? Redeem your super cash now. And when you do, use your Old Navy card in-store or online to earn double reward points. Now that's a gift. Turn your holiday into a holiday. Get to Old Navy today. Valid 1129 to 12.5 select styles only. Double reward points offer subject to credit approval. See store or oldnavy.com backslash super cash for details and exclusions. So, they thought it was a natural meteor rather than a piece of ubiquitous space junk. But they noted they couldn't be positive. <laughs> then, Secure Team, which dubs itself the fastest growing research outlet and source for data on the alien phenomenon, UFOs, and the exposure of those covering them up, decided it was a cover up in part arguing that the ESA's speed calculation was incorrect since the video was a time lapse. James Oberg, who used to work in mission control at NASA, is used to this sort of approach to UFO sightings, and in a fascinating interview with Atlas Obscura, he explains why space phenomena trip people up. <laughs> As a hobby, he has tracked back decades worth of UFO sightings to more mundane explanations, drawing on his professional expertise in space missions. His time at Mission Control, he says, not only means he has the skill to cross-reference sightings with agency documents that point to straightforward explanations, but he also has a mindset that's really difficult for earthlings to develop. <laughs> After all, everything in space is based on different perceptual cues. There's no gravity, for example, for some reports deal with images taken from the International Space Station, which is hurtling through space at five miles per second. Our sensory system is functioning absolutely perfectly for earth conditions, Oberg told Atlas Obscura, but we're still a local civilization. Moving beyond our neighborhood has been visually confusing. One example is the dancing lights seen about three minutes into this video filmed from a space shuttle flight. Oberg here points out that given the spacecraft's speed, these spots aren't dancing at all. They're traveling more or less at pace with the shuttle. Oberg writes them off as small pieces of ice or insulation that have detached from the shuttle, but are still keeping pace with it. In their interview, Oberg also highlights two other commonly misinterpreted phenomena, such as super high plumes from rocket launches and twilight shadowing both of which are exacerbated by the fuzzy boundary between night and day as the Earth spins on its axis. To understand how they work and how they can be confusing to Earthlings. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. Another dab into some mystery science. An unidentified aircraft over Oregon has the U.S. Air Force scrambling to identify what it was, what it is. An unidentified fast aircraft, which air traffic controllers were finding hard to track, was seen flying among the flight lanes of commercial aircraft in Oregon just last month. On October 25th, an unidentified aircraft was seen flying in broad daylight among the airliners in one of the United States heavily trafficked air corridors in the skies above Oregon. It had no submitted flight plan. It had no identification transponder active. Nor was it transmitting collision avoidance signals. Air traffic control stations were reportedly having difficulty following it on radar. Coming after the events of 9-11, such an unidentified aircraft is not just a matter for UFO cranks and conspiracy theorists. 
it represents a potentially serious breach of national security. Or does it? The War Zone blog of automotive news service, The Drive, began digging for an answer after one of its reporters heard scuttlebutt about the incident from aviation industry associates. At first, it sounded like a typical example of an aircraft suffering communications failure. But then came news via Reddit that U.S. Air Force F-15C interceptor fighters had been launched in response to the sightings. Two F-15 jet fighters in flight over Crater Lake, Oregon, despite their speed and radar, they were reportedly unable to locate the mystery aircraft. Strange. My theory is they were running drugs to Canada. No news yet. Not that I could find a user claiming to have been a pilot in the air at the time posted user Dupris. He described how airliners had been asked to help track an unknown white-colored aircraft visually for up to 30 minutes as air traffic controller radar was having difficulty getting a fix. While it was in sight of various airliner crews, it was apparently never close enough for its type to be identified. The last aeroplane to see it had to descend into Portland and lost sight of it. The fighters were scrambled out of PDX but flew around for a while and did not find it. And that's that. Warzone contacted North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, the 42nd Fighter Wing at Portland International Airport, and the Federal Aviation Authority, FAA, to confirm the incident. NORAD quickly confirmed it had been asked by the FAA to help track an unidentified aircraft flying at heights regularly used by commercial aircraft of 35 to 40,000 feet. It said fighters had been scrambled from Portland to investigate, but failed to find anything. That in itself is odd. Airline and commercial aircraft air crew were last month asked to help track an identified aircraft flying over Oregon. While little is known about the timing of the events, it is possible the fighters were simply activated too late. The F-15C Eagle interceptors have some of the most advanced combat search and tracking radars in the world. They're also extremely fast. So while the unidentified aircraft was reported to have been moving somewhat faster than the observing airlines, an F-15 should have been able to catch up easily. Warzone says the FAA has refused to add any detail to the story other than to confirm what had already been established. The 142nd fighter wing did not respond. So what was it? That remains speculation. Oregon is adjacent to Nevada, the well-known home to the United States Air Force's secret aircraft testing facility at Groom Lake, otherwise dubbed Area 51. But flying a secret aircraft among commercial airliner streams in daylight is both dangerous and insecure and not known to be a common practice. So, was it the Russians or the Chinese? It may have been a smuggling aircraft that's cashed up owners giving it an added dimension of speed and stealth, but there is no evidence to suggest such an aircraft exists. So is it alien? If so, they're surprisingly incompetent at avoiding attention. <laughs> Then finally, some paranormal points. Here's a personal paranormal story someone relayed that they went to sleep, but the kitchen didn't. 
Marissa states, One night I was staying with some friends and we all fell asleep pretty late, probably around 3 a.m. That's when I woke up and heard something that sounded unmistakably like kitchen cabinets opening and shutting. It was loud enough that I felt like I had to see what was going on. I didn't see anyone in the kitchen, so I assumed I was hearing things. Well, the next morning when I woke up, one of my friends was really upset and crying. She said that she woke up in the middle of the night and heard people talking in the kitchen. They were saying, we are not wanted here anymore. We aren't important. It was really, really scary. The next paranormal point. When I was 18, I was really into scary movies. I just had an urge to see or experience something scary. It was during the summer that I started researching haunted sites I could visit. Then one caught my attention. Sweet Hollow Road in Long Island. There are a bunch of popular urban legends linked to the site, and all of them have to do with creepy underpass bridges. A few of the stories speak about the violent deaths of children. One day, I told my cousin and brother, who were also ghost story fanatics, that we should visit Sweet Hollows. My cousin had just gotten his license, and my mom insisted on tagging along. (laughs) When we finally got to the underpass, we found nothing. We didn't see anything out of the ordinary. The only scary thing we experienced at the site was that, due to the thin zigzag-like road, we almost crashed into a tree. We thought the trip was a waste. But then something strange happened. The next morning, my mom swore that during the night, she felt like someone or something was watching her from under her bed. On the other hand, the rest of us had dreamt of a small boy with black hair. He was pale, and none of us could remember his face. Until this day, we still believe that whoever we saw had to be one of the many children who had died at that bridge. Blue. Wow. Well, thank you for listening to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Be sure to check out ufoheadlinenews.com daily. And also tune in to my other weekly show, The Outlander, Fridays 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, And catch my paranormal comic, The Outlanders. Direct links can be found through my main website, which is HeidiHollis.com, or just come to InceptionRadioNetwork.com. Remember always to keep informed and inspired. Smile! We're headed to Macy's Backstage. And did you hear about the new Backstage Scratch Win Smile game? Yeah, everyone's a winner. Right! Make any $25 Backstage purchase now through Saturday, December 2nd and score a Scratch Win Smile game card. You're guaranteed to win a $1, $5, $10, or $25 prize to redeem at Macy's Backstage at a later date. Scratch and win! What's not to smile about? Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com.